Gator. Raw review. Boom! Welcome to Dave's desk. I'm Dave. This is my desk. And today we've got the Lego Technic four two one six zero Audi RSQ e tron. Nine hundred and fourteen pieces. Yes. So. I have this. I've been wanting this for a, a minute, and but it's a kind of pricey set. I did buy it at full retail price at like $180. Bought it at Walmart. Didn't buy it at Lego. Didn't do any of that. I just decided I wanted it right away, and I'm going to work on it. So, yeah, I'm going to build this. I don't know. I'm not going to go through like, like specific build, like building the thing. There's plenty of reviews of, of Lego sets out there in the world, and... I'm not really a Technic guy. It's not like I don't like Technic. Like, I'm not a gearhead. And so, like, go watch Racing Bricks or Serial or, you know, there, there's a bunch of other builders that are going to do better reviews than this. Go watch those guys. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go through and kind of give my thoughts. You know, if, if something comes up while I'm building, it's like, oh, this is neat. And I'm, I'm going to come at this more from the perspective of I'm a Bionicle builder. What's some interesting stuff that's going on here that we maybe we can learn from? And that's kind of where I'm going to come from this. So that's kind of the plan here. If things come up that I think is interesting that I want to kind of drag you guys along for, we'll do that. But we'll see where this thing goes. If anything interesting happens, I'll let you know. And when I'm done, we'll talk about, we'll talk about the Lego set when it's done. Okay, so I got everything opened up here. Bags one through, it goes up to four. The one thing I will say, you know, starting off, you know, being a noob at this, maybe I'm just, you know, late to the party about grumbling on this, but really, screw on battery box. Like, you know how much of a pain in the ass this is going to be to put the rechargeable batteries in here and then screw this thing in and then use them and then have to unscrew it and then take the, Like, really, why, Lego? Like, I know you guys make a, a, a clip-in battery box because I've seen it on Bricklink, so what gives with this nonsense? All right, whatever. Okay, so I'm working on the model here, and uh, I just want to say the new differential thing where you actually put the the gears inside here, and there's three of them. Whoever figured that out, whoever designed that, is a freaking genius. Y'all, let Technic cook. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. I'm mad about things like the battery box, but this, this is freaking cool. Kudos to whoever figured this out. Okay, so we got the um, first bag done here. You get the um, two motors are already in here, and you've basically got the uh, front steering, steering one for uh, power. And I gotta say, this thing feels real robust. This is a big, solid chunk of plastic. The wheels feel decently solid. There's some give, obviously, but I gotta say, with the new uh, the new differential here, I think this is one of the best upgrades Technic has made in years. Cause the differentials always felt kind of weenie to me in like old models, and it's just like wobbly and a lot of slack. And it seems like Lego's really starting to think about the 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 components as like, oh, these are these are serious machines we're building. These aren't just, you know, ha, ha silly toys for little kids. They feel like they're future proofing technic by making more robust components that can handle more more stress because they know psychos like us are gonna put them through put them to their paces. So I really appreciate that. I really appreciate seeing like the different new elements that just feel they feel stronger and like they're going to be able to take more punishment because I think Lego understands it. You know, it's not just, these aren't, they're toys, yeah, but it, they're more than that. And that's really speaks to what Lego is. It's not just a toy. It's, it's an idea of like trying to make the thing that you want to have made using a system that lets you make it. On to bag two. So. Here's bag two. What you get 
is basically the functional model. Everything here you need to actually be able to operate the vehicle is here. Now, I would like to show you the vehicle operating, but the thing that operates the vehicle is also the thing I'm showing you the vehicle on. Uh, okay, uh, I'm like, what am I looking at? Steering, power, rear power, which is cool. It's four-wheel drive. Having played with it a bit, I will say the handling on the app is very difficult. It's very unintuitive. Maybe it's my phone. I don't know, but it just doesn't feel very responsive like it. It doesn't want to like, it's like, oh, now I'll turn. And then I'll turn. Uh, instead of just keep doing like, where's the throttle? I feel like I can get that subtlety with the uh, steering edges. And also I would, it's like levers and I would like, like a wheel, like I can maybe go like this that instead of back and forth and i don't know i just didn't like it and the other thing that's like missing on the app is like maybe a sensitivity setting to where you can make it like hyper sensitive or lower the sensitivity that would be nice where the the app can calibrate how much the wheels move because yeah i find this thing i find the steering on it to be unresponsive but maybe that's just my phone i don't know that's something you guys will have to comment anybody else who has this model can comment on and let me know if it's a problem you have or if it's just inherently a problem with the uh, the app on the model. But as far as the actual build itself, it's kind of it's kind of neat. I mean, you could probably pull a few things off here and there, but basically, with this is the chassis, and if you really wanted to, you could kind of just build off of this and build your own thing, which that's kind of cool. I I like the fact that we get the functional model halfway through. Because, like, if you just want to go run around and drive with it and have fun, you can. And now the rest of it, you know, bags three and four, it's literally just visual. It's just, you know, body work. So, I think that's pretty neat. To any of my Bionicle builders out there, if you ever want to build yourself, a like, a car or something, this isn't a bad set to pick up and literally just use this as a base and and, and build your own thing the model seems decent the app is meh yeah here's uh here's back to here's the, the functional part of the model now the rest of it will be um will be body work so stay tuned for that okay so i'm working on the e-tron i wanted to point out one thing like you know i didn't anticipate the body being anything particularly interesting because it's literally just, just nothing functional about the model is left it's all just body work and I'm like eh why does that really matter but i was pleasantly surprised building this like back part of the the fender here or whatever this ends up being it's it's at an angle and then it's slanted and then keep it in place in fact they use the little linkage like they do on the the uh suspension and i I don't know if this is the first time I've ever, they've ever done that. It's probably not. I'm not a super technical aficionado, so it's probably been done somewhere else, maybe. I don't know. But I think it's a great idea. It's something to, like, hold on to as, like, a technique because if you've got, like, a weird angle that you need to get, but you want to keep it in place, these linkages, like, that's actually a pretty good way to do that. So, yeah, kudos to the designer on that one. That uh, might not be much, but it impressed me. <laughs> so, all right, let's keep going. All right, here's the model after bag three. So, yeah, the first two bags get the frame on, and the last two bags get the body on. And I gotta say, it's start, starting to come together, and it's looking cool. Um, I wonder how my how the final bag will change my opinion, but based on the profile of like the hood and the roof in the back it's looking pretty slick i'm liking some aspects of it almost kind of you know if they could clean it up and you know put just a little bit here it almost looks cool with like this open wheel profile but yeah we'll see where they go with it on the back four okay here it is it's done no stickers this is what it looks like naked okay i don't know if anybody else who reviews these don't put on the stickers, but I never put the stickers on because I want to know what Lego's hiding underneath all, all them stickers. And this thing comes with a bunch of freaking stickers. Two sticker sheets, 
Oh my god, so many goddamn stickers. Alright, I don't want stickers on my Lego. I plan on taking this and ripping it to shreds. I don't want to peel off a bunch of stickers from my Lego set to use on a mock. I will say, if you buy this thing for mocking purposes, you get a lot of stickers that maybe you could use later on other stuff. I will say, I mean, obviously the stuff that says like e-tron and Audi and all that stuff, maybe it's not very useful, but like these stickers, these could, like these could easily go on a Mac. You know, these could easily be utilized elsewhere all over it. But these, that's just like a pattern. So there's some useful stickers here for mocking purposes. But good Lord, do you get a lot of them? Do they really try to freaking dress this thing up in stickers? <sighs> I'll, I'll be honest. I think except for the front end here, doesn't really need it. It looks cool back here and what is it with lego and great great ass ends terrible front ends maybe i'm just an ass man but you know what else is really bad with great great rear end terrible front end the bugatti the bugatti chiron i had this lego set and it was fucking ugly up front oh my god what the hell it's like it's like they ran a, it's like they started from the back and moved to the front and by the time they got to the front, they were just out of money and out of time and, all, you know, over budget. And it's like, all right, just, we don't care. This is done. And I just feel like this is, I mean, I guess it's accurate to the car, to the actual e-tron. I don't know. But as far as a model, not really knowing much about cars and not being a gearhead myself, this is fucking hideous. It's just this big, blank, flat square of a surface, and I feel like if it tapered down and you got some, like, exposed wheel, this would look super cool. But as it is, meh, I kind of want to just pull this panel off and have, like, one of these panels here. You know, well, that panel, but over here. That's what I wish was going on here. I wish this tapered down. That's just me. And I understand that the designers are trying to design a real car, you know, based off of something. They can't just, oh, we made a car. I like everything about this thing up until the front end, as far as the shaping. And I kind of fought myself the whole way to finish the body work. Cause I literally just bought this for the motors and like the new parts, like the, like the new heavy duty diffs and the CV joints. Also the tires are new. So that's cool. Body work is really impressive up until here. And then it looks like a freaking I don't know, platypus or some something. It just, it's wide and it's flat. It looks dumb. <laughs> so what else? What else? Um, Ooh, yes. So as a parts pack, Really good parts pack. It's expensive because, you know, it's like 180 bucks at retail. So I'm a good employee. So I treated myself to the e-tron. No fit on the back. It's once, you know, I, I will make a small little gripe about this. Look, Technic designers, I think, I think one of my biggest gripes about Technic is I wish they actually did use more system, which I, I don't know how, I don't know how gearheads in the Technic community feel about this i i wish technic was less like oh we got to use all these parts and i just wish lego utilized lego is just whatever whatever fit the bill because look every every building system has its own strengths and weaknesses and one of the strengths of system is being able to fill in small details where other stuff can't and technic's getting better at that because they're making tiny little they're making like small little panels and stuff and like these up here they're, they're making smaller Technic parts to be able to do this a little better, but there's still stuff that just, I think, works with system better. And I feel like this, they could have just literally just had this little lift arm here and a little system doohickey right there. Yeah, it, it, it would probably pop off too much. Maybe they could figure out a way to make this sturdy, but it looks kind of weird being smooth on one end and then kibbly on the other. But I, you know, what else were they going to do here? And it just literally pops in here. It's just one pen in there. So I feel like with some, uh, I feel like with a couple of these, you know, they could have maybe done something a little more secure and put like a little Technic system hybrid thing there. That looks a little lame. And maybe this is just a, um, a pitfall of having it be remote controlled, but literally no effort for an interior, like not even a, just a little steering wheel. But I mean, I guess 
with the motor being right there. They had, they literally could have like just stuck like a little steering wheel right there. I don't know, just for shits and giggles. And considering that this is $180 and you get three motors and a hub with new differentials and tires and stuff, you know, they, they, there's expensive stuff in here. So I imagine, you know, the way it works is they get a budget like, hey, you can make a new set for this amount of money and what it costs to actually produce new elements and what it actually costs to produce the motors and the hub and then the new tires and all that stuff eats into the cost. And then, you know, they have to make sacrifices here and there for like, okay, well, if we do this, we can't do that, you know. I think people expect everything from a Lego set, and when they build these sets, it's a series of choices that the team who, who produces these things make, and sometimes sacrifices have to be made to, for the greater end goal of the model, and, you know, so for it being remote-controlled, they probably won't try and get it under $200. You're not going to get an interior, all the little gaps and details filled in. That being said... There, there's a conversation about accessibility with these kinds of things. It's nice if Lego makes the attempt to make a, a, a model cheaper so that like, oh, this has these in it. You know, buy this set so that you have these functions, motors. And maybe there's a good technic set where it's not super duper expensive that has like pneumatic stuff in it. And so if that's the case... Uh, the next thing I want is like the, the, the modern day pneumatic stuff because I have old pneumatic, uh, components and I don't have anything new. So if there's a good recommendation for like, Hey, if you want a good smattering of, of pneumatic elements by this set, let me know what that is down in the comments and I'd appreciate that. But overall, I'm happy with it. I'm happy I bought it. I think naked like this without any stickers on it. It's an okay looking model. I just, I re like I said, I really don't like the front end. I bitched about that enough, but I just don't know that this is a model worth keeping together to just like half sit around, which is, you know, the opposite of this. I bought this for all the Technic parts in dark blue. You know, I bought this to like, ooh, at some point, if I want to build something dark blue in Technic, I'll tear this apart and build with it. But I, I loved it so much that I'm like, no, why would I want to tear this apart? So this is like the example of like what looks good to keep around and just have sitting on your shelf. I don't know that this meets that criteria and maybe it's maybe it's because i didn't put the stickers on it but my criteria of if it, it should be able to pass the the naked test it should be able to look good as a model with just the, the elements and not the stickers and i don't think this meets it but i will say you get lots of really cool new panels you get these you get these some of the little ones in black you get the um chris the 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 angled ones here these are fairly old but yeah you get a you get a nice little selection of of newer parts some little d-shaped parts there i say i say new but you know i'm i'm speaking in like relative terms of oh these have only been around for a few years in technic little um toilet papers you know when you take them off and like they even used them in white yeah so the little toilet roll as, as people are calling it uh, this is a new part as well. Newer, you know, relative. Decent parts pack, I would say. Um, definitely fits the goal of, like, buy this, build it, play with it, and then shred it to bits and build your own things. And the fact that you do get all these little panel elements in black, that's going to be useful for mockers. So, as a parts pack go, I'd give it maybe, um, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. <laughs> He's got a lot of good stuff. Uh, maybe this is a 10 out of 10 as if you really want to rip this apart and, and use it for parts. This is like a 10 for me. Everything on here is like, oh my god, it's so amazing. Because even if it's an old part itself, it being in dark blue is either it hasn't been made in forever or so. This is like an 8. The Ford is like a 10. <laughs> I'm not a professional set reviewer. Maybe I don't do this as good. As other people, but this is me rambling about Lego on Dave's desk. I'm Dave. This is my desk. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Hey, you were going to leave this video without liking and subscribing. Not cool, man.
like the video, subscribe.